Go for the tube.com in with the week six predictions before I get into this game between Virginia Tech and North Carolina. This coming Saturday, October 10th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern. College football today, I'll kick off your tailgate. We talk about all the top 25 battles, the the under-the-radar games. I'll give you my best selections. We'll also talk about that great slate of action at 8 o'clock Saturday night between Miami and Clemson, Florida State, and Notre Dame. So check it out this coming Saturday, October 10th, sportsgrid.com, sportsgrid.com. Or go to MSG Plus, MSG Networks, MSG Plus. Check out your local cable provider in the tri-state area this coming Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern, college football today. Then from 12 to 5, in-game live. Once the games kick off, I'll be taking you straight straight through in terms of all the in-game wagering perspective. I'll give you a breakdown about what I see transpiring on the field, see if we can catch some value from the gambling perspective this coming weekend, Saturday, October 10th. There's huge live movements throughout the day, so check it out. In-game live on sportsgrid.com this coming weekend. Let's talk about this game this coming weekend in Chapel Hill, Virginia Tech in North Carolina. Virginia Tech has won four straight in the series by 22 points per game, but the last two games only decided by a total of five points. Virginia Tech got this victory last year in Blacksburg, double overtime, 43-41. to They gutted out a, a victory and, more importantly, got the cover over freshman Sam Howell last year. Now Virginia Tech goes on the road. They're both 2-0. Both teams are 2-0. You look at Virginia Tech dominating road win over uh, Duke with 21 players still out for the Hokies, including defensive coordinator. Their defensive coordinator, Justin Hamilton, did not coach in that matchup. Starting quarterback, Hendon Hooker, was supposed to play against Duke and did not, and they still wound up rushing for over 300 yards and winning that matchup against the Blue Devils. 38-31. to When you look at North Carolina, they were on the road as a 14-point favorite against Boston College, built an 8-point lead, had a 5-point lead at halftime, and held on for the 26-22 4-point win in Chestnut Hill. Boston College tied the game with about 40 seconds left, down 24-22. to They went for the 2-point conversion, throw a pick 6, and that's how North Carolina won the ball game by 4 points. This is A marquee battle in the ACC, whichever team can win this matchup, really has an inside edge in terms of being either the first or second best team within the conference. Assuming that Clemson wins Saturday night against Miami, you have to look to both of these teams as the next in line to challenge the Clemson Tigers within the ACC division this season. I said at the start of the year, I feel that the second best team was Virginia Tech. They stepped up week number one against NC State with 23 players out. Backed it up with a a dominating, I thought, running uh, performance against the Blue Devils. In both games now, you look at Virginia Tech, they pounded the rock for over 300 yards. They put up 314 week one against NC State. Followed that up with a 324-yard effort over Duke last week. You look at North Carolina right now. They're struggling to find their rhythm. I mean, Sam Howell, not the same consistent quarterback that we saw last year with 38 touchdown passes, still playing well, completed 65% of his passes, 520 yards, five touchdowns, but three interceptions. And the interceptions should be a cause of concern because he hasn't faced elite defenses this year. He played Syracuse uh, that was starting with a new scheme, a 3-3-5 in week one. They were decimated on the defensive side of the ball and really held that offense in check. They followed that up last week after a week off in terms of preparation and really struggled in the second half against a blue-collar defense in Boston College. Boston College is a gutty team, but they're not an elite team in terms of speed at the secondary position, and then more importantly, on the offensive perimeter. And that's a cause of concern going up against a very athletic offense and defense in Virginia Tech. When you look at Virginia Tech, 
From an offensive perspective, offensive line is very big. They average 315 per man on the offensive line. They're going to look to run the football, stay in manageable third down situations, and that'll take the pressure off of their quarterback. Now, I expect Hendon Hooker to start in this matchup, but with Hendon Hooker or without Hendon Hooker, to me, it doesn't matter. They still have Braxton Burmeister, the former Boise State quarterback. He led the victory over Florida State week number one. He is a sophomore, completed around 44% of his passes, 269 yards, one touchdown, one interception, still an experienced quarterback. He can play on the road if Hooker's not ready in this matchup. They also have Quincy Patterson that has thrown for two touchdowns, no interceptions, in limited duty, also completed about 65% of his passes. Hendon Hooker is an athletic quarterback. If you remember, 6-2 and two as a starter last year, completed 62% of his passes, 13 touchdowns, two interceptions. But there are some playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. Raheem Blackshear, the former Rutgers running back. Uh, they also have Trey Turner at the wide receiver position, but more importantly, Herbert uh, Khalil Herbert has stepped up in terms of being that feature back for Virginia Tech this year. Defensively, what can you say? This team is loaded. Even though they lost Caleb Farley, defensive line, Deshaun Crawford, Justice Reed. I mean, they're big physical defensive linemen that clog running lanes and allow their linebackers to fill running gaps. And that's what this team has. You look at their top three tacklers uh, in terms of the linebackers, all three, Connor Holyfield, Ashby, 41 total tackles. They can run sideline to sideline. They can even put a spy on Sam Howell to force him to stay in the pocket. When you look at Sam Howell last week, big play. He extended it outside the pocket, uh, kept his eyes down the field, hit his running back on a on a seam pattern down the middle of the field uh, a a after he broke contain. So that's going to be the matchup for Virginia Tech. Keep in mind, Virginia Tech, 13 total sacks in two games. Offensive line for North Carolina, six sacks allowed against not too dominant defenses, Boston College and Syracuse. If you look at that Boston College defense last year, they only recorded 19 total sacks. They're doing much better under Halfley, but still, this is a different animal with the Virginia Tech defense. Another reason why I like the Hokies, third down defense. Holding opposing offenses to 30% third down conversions. They held Duke in check at 5 of 17 last week. That's 29%. I think they can step up. Another cause of concern for me is North Carolina. Their two big play wide receivers, Brown and Newsom, don't have any touchdown receptions this year. A lot of short underneath throws under coverage. And they're forcing, teams are forcing Sam Howell to be patient. And that seems to be the recipe to challenging North Carolina. I think Virginia Tech's in this football game from start to finish. In the end, I think they get the outright victory by seven points. Virginia Tech 31, North Carolina 24 Saturday in Chapel Hill. I'm putting out a rapid fire video of some of the other games, but check me out on College Football Today this coming Saturday, MSG Network, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern. Have a great week, everyone.